All right, man, Torture Talk, 8 a.m. show. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Look, I'm here in the morning with you guys. Wake up, get you some Egg McMuffins, some waffles with some butter and jelly. I like butter and jelly on my waffles. I don't really like syrup too much. So, but today's episode is the game really about to try to diss Kendrick. That's fine. It's kind of weird, but uh, this video comes from Moxie Approved, and um, we're going. He's going to listen to him. He got really good videos, and um, yeah, give my commentary. You know, before I get into that, I got to get my spill. This is Torture Talk. If you like the content, please consider subscribing. If you're new here, let me work for your subscription today. All the beautiful single ladies, put one in the chat. All the fellas, y'all know where to find the ones at. Just don't harass them. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content that's absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation, thank y'all for all the donations. Links is on the screen. Cash app, PayPal is in the description. They call me the Hidden Gem. I went from 1,300 subscribers to over 11,000 subscribers. Over 11,000. Million by next Monday. You know what I'm saying? And let me know where you from, man. So no more talking. Let's get right to it. And we're going to do it. So let's go. All right, so let's do it. You know the links is going to be in the description. So let's go. The game has placed himself in a very pitiful but rather unique situation where whatever career he has left is pretty much over after involving himself in the beef that had nothing to do with him. But not only that, this video they just released on the game takes the cake. It's nasty work. It's nasty work, but we gonna get to that. But wait. Be Here's the thing. And I know, excuse me, I gotta pick something up off the floor, I'm sorry. Um, Here's the thing. And I think a lot of us gotta understand this. There we go. Um. The game's always been, uh, uh, how would I say this? He always been a shit ball. You know what I'm saying? Doodle ball and shit ball. And I would say maybe I'll give Drake the shit ball and game always been the doodle ball. You know what I'm saying? He always been a little doodle ball and Drake's always been a shit ball. And I'm not surprised if anything that Moxie says that game did or said, because the game is in it. He is a, an attention prostitute. Like, he really is an attention prostitute. He loves attention. And he loves to put it all on him, no matter what. So I wouldn't be surprised. So let's keep it going. Before we get too far into this video, please do me one small favor. Hit that like button and apply pressure to that subscribe button. Yes, apply pressure to that subscribe button. Outside of Drake, no one in this beef came out looking this bad. Maybe J. Cole, but for me, not even J. Cole. I respect someone that's like, you know what? This smoke, it ain't for me. But moving forward, as far as J. Cole being involved in another beef, I, I, I don't want to hear his name involved in any kind of beef. And I know this is not what a lot of people want to hear. I know I can hear my niggas up there right now like, nah, nah, don't do that. But, but outside of that, J. Cole is good. But the game? Oh, hell no. Hell no. But first, what got us here? Well, the game has made himself notable for making dumb moves that are unnecessary at that. The best example of this is how he started that whole G-Unit beef for- That's true. I'm telling you, I'm telling y'all, man. This dude is, listen, I know game has some street ties or whatever, and I get it. He's, he, he, Chuck Tell, Chuck Thomas, whatever his name is. I get, I get it. He has some street tides. But just because you got street tides doesn't mean you can't be a buffoon or a clown. And I just definitely think he's a clown. He is he's an attention prostitute. Like for real. He really is. For the simple fact that he thought it would catapult him to the top. Listen, Never mind that Dre told him not to. Never mind that Dr. Dre was the one that put 50 Cent on. Never mind that Dr. Dre told you don't do it. Stand down. It's called a doctor's advocate, but Dre is not 
part of the production, executive producer, nothing. Nope. Is there a reason for that? Uh, because he financially and infrastructurally, he had to take sides with who Jimmy took sides with. Which is 50. Which was 50. Okay. And so it made sense because that's where the money, the bulk of the money was being made. But you did this, dog. You did this. It's not like people deliberately pushed you out. You are the rogue dude. You're the one that just does stupid shit. It's, it's always your fault. And this is what makes me mad. He always trying to play victim when we all know it's your fault. We all know that you are not a man of your word. You go back on your word. We know this. It's so crazy to me, man. Just to watch this dude crumble because I used to be a big fan. And he just, he just don't, he don't get it. He don't get it. Some niggas just, they will always be niggas. They will never get out of the nigger spell that they're in. You have to become a black man and uh, grow up to be a black man eventually. You can't always be a nigger all your life. The nigger spell got to wear off eventually. And so at that point, you didn't want to piss 50 off because he was the breadwinner. Um, so yeah, they everybody chose sides, and but I did the doctor's advocate and now honestly, the game hasn't lost too many beefs. Held his own with all the G unit. Three A spill brains when I pop shots outside in wide from the hip hop cops. A broad day in LA. I'ma tell imagery this nigga bootlegging my music. Ain't nothing for him to say. Took me off my own songs, then put it on his tape. So I'ma take him out his house with the beam on his face. He pretty much scared the fuck out of Meek Mills. This nigga take a L every time he go viral. Welcome to the West, and this ain't the life of Pablo. Stay on that boot. He got a bar. I said, like, come on, bro. How are you battling me? Man, listen. Out of Jay-Z. You playing the game, you know you ain't gonna win. Quit playing them childish games with grown men. And Eminem at that. I'm not played in the clubs. Motherfucker put a cork in it. Only reason they still play your shit in the club is because you still perform in the I am a boy knows how to rap. <laughs> With the moves he made. <laughs> he could say the only reason why they still play your shit in the club is <laughs> you still perform in them. <laughs> Coming from Eminem, that's funny because you really know Eminem ain't playing no clubs. <laughs> Outside of the booth makes his rapping ability somewhat irrelevant. When this beef started, nobody had the game in mind, even though the Drake was in his 100 video. No big deal. Now, I was shocked, along with a host of you, when Game got up one morning and decided to go at Rick Ross in the middle of this beef. Payback punch for the drama you tried to bring on. Made back trunks, type of shit that we eat our wings on. My K dot shit, I don't have to turn the- Now, let's take a minute to talk about LA gang culture. Let's take Watts, for example. Two gangs I want to mention, the Bounty Hunter Bloods and the Great Street Crips. Now, this has been a murderous beef going on between the two for decades now. But you know what? If you happen to have beef outside of the east side with a Bounty Hunter Blood and a Great Street Crip happens to be around, guess who gonna get small? Not the Bounty Hunter Blood, you motherfucker, you know why? Because it's Watts versus everyone. You can take that really to all of LA. There's many gangs in LA that's been having murderers beef for years. But a lot of times when someone from outside of the LA area gets beef with one of these cats, guess what? We gonna squash our beef for this second to take care of these ones. Now keep that in mind when you think about the move that game made going at Rick Ross. It is utterly LA game politic wise, just disrespectful. Now, remember I said that game really hasn't lost a lot of beefs. This might be the first time ever in hip hop history that someone lost a beef and the person that they were rapping against said nothing to them on wax. You niggas don't want to eat? You niggas don't want to eat my slime? You niggas starving. <laughs> you niggas starving. <laughs> well, also, you have benzene. I don't got nothing against some of them. I got nothing against some of them. They can rap, but I care about us more. In my honest opinion, I don't think that Rick Ross was a target at all. I think it was Kendrick. These are amateur chess moves that he 
maybe probably thought that Kendrick was gonna see this and send him a couple subs and give him a reason to go full-fledged beef with Kendrick. Man, that is jealousy in its purest form. You're supposed to help the little homie out. You're not supposed to try to take a moment away from him. Now, I get it. He probably, just like the rest of us, did not know, had no idea of how bad Drake would get sent. So whenever the smoke settled from this beef, look, dogs, I had your back. Let me get a feature. Well, a Drake feature is not really worth too much now. Just ask Camilla Cabelli. That's true. And, and, and a lot of people need to recognize this. Academics, Adam22, Aiden Ross, all you super mall, all y'all Superman glazers need to recognize Drake feature ain't really that big no more. Because nobody really cares. <laughs> nobody cares. This was just straight up jealousy trying to take a moment away from Kendrick, who's from the same area that he's from, who we all watch take part in Kendrick's House of Blues moment, showing some love. Now, that all seems just disingenuous. Then we all know about the Kendrick Popout show that he didn't show. Coming straight out of West Side Cedar Block, bombed in Pyro, um, which is still my hood to this day. They ain't never slacked, they never ran, they never did nothing but throw this shit up. I took that Cincinnati hat worldwide, I put on for content. But my, my thing is like, why you need to tell everybody that though? And I've been saying this for years about about uh, this guy. You don't really, nobody really needs to know all that no more. We already know you from the streets. We know you a gangbanger. Why you have to be? Why you have to be an attention prostitute? Why you gotta always tell us that you a gangbanger? I'm still from my hood. I'm still out here throwing up the set. I'm still throwing up the set. Sixty years old. I'm still throwing up the set. Like, come on, bro. And I put on for the West Coast, nigga. And Top Dog know what it is. Kendrick know what it is. Nigga YG know what it is. But I don't think he would have got too much love anyway. But what makes this the worst is Game preparing for a new album. And this snippet was released. Check this out. Dom, it was the sign of the times when... Nigga had to take a deep breath. I tried walking straight past them. I see T flats and they asking. I got on my khaki. Now, it's obvious that this nigga sound just like Kendrick. Listen, that is nasty work. That's nasty work. These my rag just hanging out the back end of my backpack and all my homies in the casket. That's why I'm standing in the gap with this ratchet trying to get the tans after that walk all the way to Athens. So what the fuck? K Dot sent out a lot of subliminals and watched the party die. A lot of subliminals. We, I mean, I can only hope but to hear more of this on Kendrick's album coming up. If he really wanted to shake things up, I'd be rather ecstatic to hear a game subliminal, or even better yet, a direct diss. As much as the game can rap, I really don't think he can handle that smoke. And without a direct Kendrick diss, I don't see how anyone will ever really pay attention to the game ever again. And no, age is an excuse, Jay-Z, is still rapping just as nice as when he just started. Damn, hold stun on them haters. Sorry, Mr. Drizzy, put so much y'all talk. Silly me rapping about shit that I really bought. Why these rappers rap about guns they ain't shot and a bunch of other silly shit that they ain't got. Matter of fact, check out that album he did with Jay Electronica. A written testimony. That is some of Jay-Z's best work rarely spoken about. How about Nas? He's rapping just as great as he did in the beginning. A King's Disease trilogy. Two of them are classics. Then we got the game. Well, in his own words. You 38 and you still rapping. Uh. But you let me know how you feel about this in the comments section. Do you think that the game will be one of Kendrick's victims on his new album coming up? Or you think that Kendrick gonna let the homie slide? Do you think he'll take it there? I, for one, will tell you I hope so. I hear some of you guys saying, nah, nah, it ain't gonna happen. They both from Compton. Well, the game ain't really been acting like that. But we also know the game has a habit of tripping over his own feet. <laughs> Whoa. Well, anyway, you know how. <laughs> you read that back a little bit. <laughs> that. But we also know the game has a habit of tripping over his own feet. <laughs> Whoa. Well, anyway, you know how we like. 
Uh, <laughs> that was funny as hell. Oh my god. Yeah, man. Make sure y'all go check out Moxie and Poog, man. Great channel. But yeah, man. That's the thing, man. You know what I'm saying? The game attention prostitute. He loves the attention. And it's always been that way. And it's so crazy to me how a lot of us will give him a pass on all these things. And it's like, come on, bro. Now you're trying to sound like Kendrick on a song. It's like, how many albums do you have? You know what I'm saying? Where you basically do something that's original or something that's good without you trying to sound or trying to be like somebody else or trying to diss somebody. I don't know. Sometimes I think game, I think game think that this is, this is nine, six or not nine, five or something. And I feel like he just thinks that he has to like, he has to diss people for people to like his music. Just make good music, man. Just make good music. You always got to say somebody's name all the time and say somebody's girl name and, yeah, I'm doing the disc joint. I'm doing this track. I'm talking about all the girls in the industry that I had sex with. Watch y'all do that. It's like, really, dog? You gonna do that? You gonna do a whole album talking about, or a bunch of songs talking about how many girls you slept with in the industry or dudes, girls you slept with in the industry? It's like anything you could think of, any anything that game does is not his original idea. It's always revert back to somebody else because all you got to do is look who he surrounds himself around. And you'll find out that it is what it is. But either way, man, that was a great video. Y'all have yourself a good morning, man. Love y'all out there. I'll be uh, putting up the 12 o'clock show. So y'all make sure y'all go watch that. Six o'clock show will be coming up as well after that. Go tomorrow. I mean, we'll go back and watch the shows that I did yesterday. And, um, yeah. So thank y'all for tuning in, man. I appreciate y'all, man. See y'all. Peace. <laughs>